All right, welcome to the seventh episode of D Cures Album Fet. Bro, first off, I just want to talk about the album art. I love it. <laughs> I love um I, I, I love how elegant the entire thing is. And then your cat's over to the left hand side just like licking himself. <laughs> and I'm assuming that was on purpose. Oh yeah. Had so to have you, a little comedy in there. Yeah. So can you so, tell us a little bit about the album art? I literally the rap about the cat. Um our cat goes crazy. Our cat's name is Penny. My wife was a big uh, Big Bang Theory fan. And so our cat Penny likes to fling her turds around <laughs> at like 2 a.m. out of her litter box. And so I like rap about that in uh, Wait On You. I think I say something about it in Crunchy too. Mm. Um, but yeah, our cat... Um, it's something that I also talked about in man, what album was that? Clean? Anyway, um, our cat was like something that was a big issue for me because I'm allergic to cats. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah. And so man, I've been <laughs> fighting through allergies and in different inhalers for the past many years. Bro, but, that's love. Uh, that yeah. is love. Like, <laughs> Obviously, oh. I, I couldn't let, because uh, we had talked about having a close friend of Aaron's kind of take the cat, but I just couldn't do it. So it's kind of a battle between who's going to live longer, me or the cat <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Bro, and the cat got nine lives. So. Yeah, yeah. Bro. But the cat is actually really... Really sweet cat, just goes crazy, gets the night zoomies, um, <laughs> and is kind of a terror when it, when it gets in the mood. But the the family's the family, you know. Yeah, we got yeah. Peeve in there. Yeah, of course we have Aaron in there. Yeah, and that's the start. You know, that's the start to the family. After um, Enemy Fancy just felt like the right album. You know, things were yeah. super heavy, and I just wanted to kind of tone it back and try mm -hmm. some other styles. Some yeah. alternative Bro, some I, I, yeah. country. I, I love this album because of just how like it upbeat it is and how different it is. And every every single every um every beat and every song is like a different like up tempo and, and yeah. like just like and like and, and then the album itself is different because like in the first in catch up, you're talking about like I love how you bring your like you start talking about relish <laughs> and you're talking about relish on the dogs, and then you're talking about the inauguration and about how you know like people are all upset about the inauguration, but yeah. now they're losing their jobs and stuff. And I'm like, oh crap! Like messy, like ketchup on a white shirt. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that was just kind of like a fun um, way to kind of tie in some current events you know to um be in fancy but personally i can never be real fancy mm -hmm. myself because man something's gonna get ruined i'm gonna <laughs> get a i'm gonna get a ketchup stain on something yeah um uh, i'm, I'm but, the guy that eats you know french fries in a tux <laughs> but i love um so I think it was to I think it's toxic. I may be wrong, but I love how you talk about the alcoholism and you refer to it like a bag of chips and you're talking about how like you're going to have just one. But you're like, but am I really like because who says I'm just going <laughs> to and I never I never thought about it like that until you bring it up in this album, because like, bro, who says I'm just going to have one chip? Like who opens an entire bag of chips and says, oh, I'm going to have right. one. I'm going to have one chip <laughs> out of this whole bag. Like who? <laughs> Yeah, who buys a six pack and only has one? Right. So yeah. I, I love how you related it to that. And so tell us about that. Like, what was like the the behind? So like with this whole album, like coming from Enemy and going into Fancy, you still in this album, you still talk about like in this one, you talk heavily about like your testimony, and you talk mm -hmm. about where 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 you've gone and the transition between the two albums. So what would you say? Like, what would you say, like, spiritually and, like, your testimony was changing in between these two albums? Yeah, I think at this point, you know, I was just growing. Um, last year, the album came out about a year ago. Yeah. Um, 
And last year we had just started getting into reading the Bible every day. And so that was like a big, a big step really to walking with God again. And so I think it was kind of easy to start talking about that stuff, um, to be more lighthearted and not to dwell on, you know, all the dark stuff that I had done and just kind of lighten up talk about, you know, toxic people and how I'm not really dealing with it anymore Mm -hmm. and just kind of moving in a new direction. Um, So, yeah, I mean, fancy doesn't sound like anything else that I've created. So it's just really cool. Not at all, bro. And it makes you like, (laughs) I was listening to it downstairs just now, like playing Mario Kart and my son was dancing the whole album. And (laughs) and especially like when dance off goes, he's dancing like the whole out, the whole song. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy to think because, man, there was a time in my life when I couldn't even make a song like that. Like I was yeah. so depressed. Everything was so dark mm-hmm. and hopeless. And just having that God's presence in my life, period, just to be able to create a song like that blows me away. Looking mm-hmm. back, because, man, if you go back um, and listen to my music like 10 years ago, you'd be like, man, what is this? Yeah, like It's completely different. And it really just shows how much he's changed. Yeah. You know, yeah. how he's changing my heart. You can and you can like you said, but like you can see it just in the 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 drastic difference between enemy and fancy. Like you can just see the, the drastic difference. Like because Big it's time. it's just it and like you said in the in the song, like you're talking about your testimony and how you're talking about how you have to be able to share your testimony so people see what you've walked through. And you, you talk about that in the album. Like you, cause yeah. people, cause everybody's like, Oh, you're Craig. You know, we get that all the time. Like, oh, you're a Christian. You're supposed to be perfect. That's what you're talking about. And it's like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. Nobody, nobody ever said that, bro. <laughs> like, no, 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 I'm not perfect. Like now do we aim to be, do we aim to be better every day? And, and do we have a testimony? And that's what I love about your music is that you can look at your music. And that's why I wanted to do this whole entire series was mm. because I, I love how your story is broken down through these albums and your, your growth in Christ is shown through your music. Because like we've talked about earlier, like you go from not really talking about it at all to talking yeah. about your testimony to now talking about how he's changing you and you see it in your, your walk with Christ. You see it in your, you know, just in your mental fortitude, the way that you're talking and, and also just the upbeatness of it. Um, Mm. I was talking to my wife. I said to her, I looked at her and I said, you know, if we, if we ever get remarried, I want, want wait on you to be our wedding song (laughs) because like, bro, like I I love it, man. I love everything that you did with it. I I love like just the humanity and, and, and I love how like you're just talking about how like you even bring in the the cat, you bring in the Mm -hmm. dog, like you're talking about how we're waiting on you to come home. And like, it's just an amazing song. So like what made you, decide that like that was a song that you wanted to put on the album like dedicated to Aaron like what made you decide that you wanted that to be part of the album um I already had to wait 29 years to meet her so the (laughs) wait you know what I mean like I'll wait I would have waited another 29 if I had to find her um that was just you know me saying that she was worth the wait and that you know even when times are are tough that you know when I have to travel for shows or whatever it is that, you know, the, the time apart um, just kind of makes us grow more fond. And, you know, the, the weight, uh, I, I had to be real patient to, to get to her. And um, yeah, so that, that was just, you know, part of the journey of finally getting sober and, and meeting her at the right time and God, you know, putting her in my life at the right time. But yeah, Amen. the, the wait was very long. And for a lot of people um, that, I, that still reach out to me, um, you know, that feel like they're never going to find that person. You will, mm-hmm. you will. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think that's true. And, and I'm glad that you bring that up because there are, they, there are, there are a lot of people who, who just like, Oh, I'm done. You know, I'm done. I'm not yeah. going to find that person. I'm done. Uh, uh, you know, there isn't one for me or I'm going to do this on my own or I'm going to just get, you know, I'm going to just live this life on my own. I'm an independent woman or independent man. I don't need nobody. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, God created us to be with people. 
Um, that's what he created us for. Yeah. Um, you know, and and also it's just different. You know, it's, it's different being alone versus being with somebody and being married and now becoming one. It's very different. Like the compassion, the conversations, the like when you feel alone but you're not alone and stuff like that. It's definitely very different. Um, very, yeah, priorities change. Yo, I mean, yeah, 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 man. Like even and even as your even as your marriage grows, your priorities continue to change. Like, oh yeah, there was a time where you know I would come home from work and all I would want to do is leave. I would go. I would want to go out. I want to go do something. Now you know all I want to do is stay home and play with the yeah. kids and play video games and hang out with the kids or hang out with my wife. And at one point that, that was in it, I wanted to go out and drink. I want to go chill. And now that's like far gone. Yeah. Um, ain't easy. I love it. I, I love it like, yeah, like I love just, just that, like just singing it. Like I'm like, <laughs> but, um, but I love that because you're talking about, you know, how you went from getting picked on to sharing your testimony, living in Christ and, and stuff like that. So can you kind of talk a little bit about that? Like what made you like what made that song uh, uh, that's something that you want to talk about? Like what and what do you mean? It ain't easy. What's not easy? It ain't easy being a rapper. What else do I say? Um, it's not easy being different than everyone else. It's not easy to walk with God and to talk about it. Um, it's not easy to change your life. It's not easy to um, get sober, many things. Mm -hmm. But I think the main um, point of that song was just to say, um, you know, as hard as it can be to um, kind of take that leap into your, into your faith, that leap of faith into faith, um, man, it's so rewarding to like live differently and to feel yourself be changed through that faith and that um, trust in, in God. And um, you know, it's, it's worth people making fun of you if that's what it is. Um, you know, that's, that's okay. It ain't easy, but man, life is way better that way when you're just who you know that you should be and you're walking the way that you've, you know, have always wanted to the way that you told yourself, uh, told yourself you would be. Um, yeah, it's, it's way worth it. Um, we'll be forever treated differently while we're on this earth, but man, that's okay. Amen. Well, and that's, and that's the, yeah. Right. And, and, and that's what he says, right. He tells us to die, die to ourselves daily. And, Something that I wanted to ask you is just because it's on my mind and, and, and it actually came up in, in a kind of different conversation. But, you know, talking about it ain't easy and you brought up being sober. Right. There was a, a couple of friends of mine who one of my friends is sober five years and he slipped up and mm. he got drunk and now he's back on the wagon. He's been drinking again. And um, someone someone made a post about it on this page that I'm a part of talking about alcoholism and well, no, I made the post and I was like, Hey, I want to do a couple episodes about uh, alcoholism. And he commented and was like, yeah, I was five years sober, but I, I lost it on, on Marine Corps recruiting duty. And then someone commented on it and was like, Oh, so you mean almost. And I was like, wow, like you mm. really wanted this dude like that. <laughs> and, and the reason why I'm bringing this up now though, is because like, we're talking about the song ain't easy, right? What what was it? And I know that we've talked about this before, but like when you especially when you made a song like that, it ain't easy. And even in the song running, like you what made you and what continues to make you not want to go back to drinking? And if you're somebody who like because I remember that you had said that you had you were sober for a period of time and then you relapsed. Yeah. What what advice would you give to somebody who was sober? for five years and then relapse. Like, what would you say? Like time, time to make it a week, you know, um, that <laughs> I can't even imagine drinking. Um, I don't know what it was like for that person, but I almost imagine, you know, did their life change a whole lot other than just staying away from the bottle? Mm -hmm. Um, I think, while getting while being sober is one thing you have to 
change who you are. Um, you have to work on yourself because if that's the only thing that changes is I'm not getting drunk every night and you're um, not changing to become more like the person you want to be, you're more susceptible into falling back into that. Um, I think you're, you know, your mindset has to change the way that you um, go throughout your day. The, the person that you are has to change. Um, if you're still going to the same places, if you're still hanging out at the bar, if you're still hanging around the same people that you used to drink with, um, it's going to be really hard to stay sober for a long time and to make it five years and to, um, you know, go back to drinking is, man, I just imagine, you know, if there were many changes, um, wow. because in my opinion, there probably wasn't. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't, times... you know what, I, I didn't even think about it like that. And, 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 I, and, I, and I understand what you're saying and I understand the purpose and, and why you're saying it, because if we, if we just stop drinking, but we don't change our innermost parts and we're not doing it for the right reason, then we mm -hmm. just go to a different vice. And then all of a sudden, like we put ourselves in the position to have that drink. So like, you know, if, if you didn't want to drink, then you wouldn't have been in the position to have a drink and you wouldn't yeah. like, like we were talking about a couple episodes ago. Like if you have an issue with this, then why would you put yourself in front of it? And, and Absolutely. if you were really trying to change then you wouldn't have done that. And then, and then on top of that, were you gaining discipline in other places and were the people around you that allowed you to drink, were you still hanging out with those same people? Should you have still, so I, I understand what you're saying about that. And yeah, I mean, there's always going to be time. You're always going to have time for whatever it is. Yeah. What are you putting in that space? Mm. You have to put the right things in that, you know, in your old drinking space. What are you replacing that with? Um, we got to replace it with better things than, <laughs> you know, whatever was killing us. Yeah. So, and that it kind of leads into running because that's really a lot of what you're talking about, how like you're running from God and, yeah. and how, um, I don't remember what song it is, but you talk about how you, you, you're looking forward, but really you should be on your knees, look to being thankful for what you're talking about. That like, was actually my quote for the, for the evening. <clears throat> yeah. So tell us it before that I, was, before yeah, I that was, up. <laughs> that was from running. Yeah. That yeah. that's probably my favorite song just because it's yes. so honest. Um, I say, I didn't, I didn't want to admit it, but I've been finding I'm broken. He's been running through this world, hoping to find him a token that his time has truly mattered. Promise I'm going for broke. I'm going to reach it. Forgot about Jesus. He finally woke him. I don't know who I've been pleasing conveniently open. Rapping for no reason. Yeah, but I see him. He's dope when I should be down on my knees. Thankful to be in this moment. Instead, I'm up worried about where I'm going. I'm running away. Yeah, bro. Like, tell me, tell me what, what were your thoughts like when that happened? Like when I, you put that I can't down, even listen to that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't even listen to that, man. It's so like honest um, that I'm constantly worried about what's next. Like yeah. I can't just um, appreciate everything that God has done for me. Amen. I always seem like looking toward the future. I can't just chill out. I can't just sit down with my family yeah. and be grateful. Um, I think a lot of us just do that. I think that's just kind of what this generation is built. You know, we get caught up in social media or um, instantly looking for instant gratification. You know, we can't wait to, to see what's next. And really, man, that, that was just a reminder for me, like, yeah. man, life is incredible. Like life yeah. has never been better. Um, but still, you know, we're, we're human and we have those tendencies to, you know, look toward what's next. We, we beat ourselves up because we didn't hit wherever we wanted to hit. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, man, that that was just me being honest. Like I'm still, yeah. I'm still running, even though life is better. I'm yeah. still, you know, not focused on God. I don't sit with God like I should. I don't sit with my family like I should. Um, but yeah, that yeah, and it's so and it's so true because like that. I'm telling you, man, this is this happens every week. The 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 album of the week is like what I'm living through in life in this season because <laughs> we were talking it's about crazy. that. We were talking about that at church a couple of weeks ago. We were talking mm. about content and how we often aren't content with our lot in life. 
and how we constantly want more and we want more and we want more. And like sometimes we'll play it off as like, oh, well, yeah, I want more so I can praise God more or I can do more in this position. And it's like, OK, well, are you praising him and are you doing what you could be doing in the position you're in now? And, yep. and, and, you know, and that's something that I'm dealing with, too, is because, you know, like I, I, right now I'm thinking about it now. You know, I, I started the podcast and it was never meant to be a recruiting duty podcast. But my recruiting duty numbers on my episodes are off the charts. Like I get four or five hundred listens per episode. When I do mm. anything besides recruiting, it's like 60, 70 or whatever. And huh. here I am not being content because I'm like, oh, but that's not what I wanted. But then it's like, but if you think about it, it's like, bro, but God is still putting people in your way that are mm -hmm. listening to what you're talking about. So just be content with what you have, because in one position you are doing that. And, and it's like, and that's like a lot of what I'm learning and trying to learn. And, and I think that, that like in this position in my life, I think that's what God is teaching me is being humble and being content with what I have and where I'm at. And, but like you said, it's easy for us to, you know, get into the day to day things and, and work and school and whatever it is and family and, and, and you just start running. And then the next thing you know, it's like, yo, when was the last time I opened up the Bible? When was the last time I prayed? When was the last time I got on my knees? When was the last time, mm -hmm. you know, me and my wife prayed together and, and, and stuff like that? And, you know, you get so caught up in the anxiety of things and instead of casting it on him you're just running to the next thing. You're running to the next thing instead of being thankful and content for what you have. I think everyone does that. Yeah. Probably everyone on earth does that. Um, it's something very real. I think we're all really hard on ourselves. You know, we, we could never do enough. It's funny. I'm, I'm actually working on a song right now about the same thing. Um, just about, you know, we're, um, always going to disappoint ourselves. We're always going to disappoint someone else. Yeah. But that's, that's life. We have God. We don't need to be perfect. Yeah. We don't need to get it right every time. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. So every running is kind of similar, you know, we're, we're running away from the reality of the things that we need to face and the people that we truly want to become, um, just to achieve things that ultimately don't matter. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's and it's a weird thing though because like, you know, and this is what I've been struggling with when it comes to being content. It's like, okay, is it wrong to like my my thing is this, right? Is that I feel like if you're too content, well then you can become lackadaisical. But then at the same time it's not like that's in my thought process and this is what I'm thinking is like that's different though. Like being content yeah. with what you have, but but being afraid to grow and not allowing yourself to grow is different. That's two totally different things, and and that's like because it's like because if you think about it, everything that we're taught is that is that you're never enough. Keep striving for more. Yeah. Keep bigger house, bigger car, more music, more more albums, yeah. more <laughs> albums, more more. I mean, you, you see how much music I drop. I mean, yeah. Bro, and Man. I'll listen. Hey, I'll I'm gonna be real. Even like finally, bro. Like for instance, like TMR, I was hitting him up all the time. Like, yo, when are you dropping something else? Now this dude's dropping a song a day. Every and time. finally, I shut up. <laughs> I just I stopped. <laughs> but even with you, you know, I constantly yo, when are you dropping a new album? When are you dropping a new album? And you know, and it's because yeah, it's because of, one, it's it's great conversations like this that remind us of being content and being humble and being reminding yeah. one another as brothers in Christ. Like, Hey man, yo, I, I think this happened with you and I think you need to calm down, you know, and, and you're coming from a place of love. And that yeah. I think is a huge part of what doesn't happen is a lot of people don't have that one-on-one -on -one communication where like, Hey, you know what, man, I'm not coming at you from any kind of angle, but Hey, I just want you to know, man, this is kind of how you're coming off. And I want to make sure you understand or just remind you like, Hey man, that, yeah. what you're doing isn't Christ-like, Hey, what you're doing. And, and again, not coming from, you know, an, a place of neglect or a place of negativity, but a place of love and, and, and just bringing that back into it. I think. Great point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like well said. Yeah, like I I, mean, this, that's... and that's what this whole album really got me thinking. It really was just like, 
like I said, man, I love how like you just completely changed the point of view, right? Because you're still talking about the same stuff, but you're talking about it in a different angle. Because like in the album, you still talk about your testimony, you still talk about alcoholism, you still talk about your your sin, you, you even bring up the enemy again. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just the way in which you did it that was uplifting, and it was reminding you of like, hey, like look at how far we've come. Look at yeah. my life. Look at my wife. Look at my my family that we've created. Look at the music that I'm doing. Look at the different um, reels that we're making. Like, and you talk about that too about how your rap career, you know, and and then you talk, start talking about the um, the dad jokes, and <laughs> and it's like, but I think that's what I love about it though is that just how humble of a person you are and even like you know in the album you talk about how how you have to be this open in order for us to really believe it like in your because because of how open you are to everybody in your music yeah it's easy for us to consume your testimony and understand it because we see it man that's that's the goal right yeah. i think for for um I've always heard something along the lines of like, you can hear something so many times, but you won't get it until you just have it um, told to you the right way. Um, yeah. It's with that it goes with like learning new stuff. Um, it's something you know that I picked up doing CrossFit. Like there are just some things you don't get until you hear it the way that you needed to hear it. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I think that's why. Fancy was so special because I was, you know, doing things completely different. Yeah. Um, the the music was different, the sound was different, um, the point, like you said, the point of view is different. I'm, you know, showing how like the enemy doesn't need to be the end. Like life goes on, life get, can get way better. Um, you can you can beat the enemy and live a way better life. And I was just trying to show that, you know, kind of display it through the music. And I think we did a, I think we did all right. No, you did. <laughs> I think we did all right. No, nah, definitely. Man. It's, it's, it, it, like I said, man, you went from like, and I don't mean this to be a horrible way to say it, but like you went from this like really, really emo, like punk rock album where yeah. like the enemy and like we're all upset and sad and we see the darkness of it you know we even have a song called darkness and then now in this album like you're bright you're bushy tailed like you're loving yeah. life you're you're seeing god's graces you're, you're talking about your testimony so it's definitely very um a very amazing album and it's just a different tempo um so that's now just, that's god's grace amen. on display yeah <laughs> amen That's a, it's fancy like that um so what do we got next we got ghost so what what is in store for us with ghost ghost was a mixture of feeling the holy ghost's presence in your mm. life but also um about how we get kind of lost in the world and we feel invisible mm. how you know it's hard to sometimes be seen it's hard to be understood um so it was in that realm. It was, you know, faith, but also more of the world, you know, doing what it does to us, mm. making us feel empty like a ghost. All right. Well, I'm going to spend <laughs> the week diving into that one and. Everybody else, please do you as well. Um, everybody, make sure that you guys listen to the album. Uh, any questions that you guys have, please hit us up. Either DM D Cure or DM myself. Questions that you want to be brought up onto the episode. Uh, make sure you're following the podcast on on Spotify, Apple, or YouTube. Um, this way that when the episodes drop, you can hear them. Um, All and three. Also, yep. And then, um, and then also, we uh, we have a playlist already created on the YouTube channel. I'm also going to create a playlist on the Spotify as well, so you can go to see all the episodes there. Um, but D Cure, thank you so much for this week, man. I appreciate you, thank brother, you. and I look forward to Ghost next week. Same here, man. Thanks for having me yet again. All right, Audi.